week. So we'll start with our Sunday night game here, Chris, as we move on in the pod to Lions and Packers. My Detroit Lions are in Sunday night football. Never thought I would see the day. It's finally happening. And who knows, by the time the game happens, they may be eliminated from the playoff situation because Seattle, uh, if they do win, then that does eliminate Detroit from the playoff situation. Green Bay, it doesn't matter what Seattle does for them. If they beat Detroit, they get that seven seed uh, in the playoffs. They played week nine, and it was one of the weirder games in the NFL because Aaron Rodgers had three interceptions in the game. Uh, one was in the end zone, the next one was in the end zone, right. and the next one was at the three-yard line. Yeah. And so they were on the doorstep, right. literally in the end zone two times uh, when he was picked off. That has never happened before. Detroit won by, by six. Detroit's offense didn't have a great game. Uh, you looked at the film yeah. from this one. Yeah. So let's just start kind of with the Packers O. Yeah, okay. And basically Aaron Rodgers, that offense. What did you learn from looking back at the tape of that one that – may be different or relevant to what we're going to see this Sunday night. Right. Well, it was a time of the year. I mean, you you explained it right. You set the table. I mean, the Packers kind of controlled the game. It felt like one of those games where you watch the back and you go, ah, they, they probably should have won that. The mistakes killed them. You know, like you said, it, it's three interceptions in the end zone. Yeah. Right. It's, it's some plays left on the field. Um, it was Aaron Rodgers at maybe one of the – I would say one of the worst points of his career where he had no trust in the receivers. He didn't trust his O line. He was always looking at them instead of looking downfield. He left a lot of plays and yards on the field. And, you know, the Lions themselves, uh, they were worried about the run game more than the pass game in that game. Hmm. So there's some di- things that change in this dynamic. You know, first off, you know, the, the, the Packers didn't have a, a great day running. They didn't have a bad day running either. I want to say this. They didn't run the ball up the middle, kind of like we talked about with Detroit and Carolina two weeks ago. They kind of found their success on the edge. It wasn't the big people. You know, you, you expect, oh, wait, you know, they ran for over 100 yards. I must have done some things like that. And you go, oh, wait, no, it was Roger scrambling and a few edge runs, but they didn't win or just overpower them up front. So they kind of stood – Stood or stood pat or stand pat in the in the in the run game, but you know they played a lot of single safety defenses, a lot of run defenses, and it just was going back watching. It was jarring. Going, I mean, what who, what teams have ever played like this against Aaron Rodgers, where they just play? We're going to stop the run and give you some of the best pass looks you can ever get. I, I gotta think this is this time around that that this is on Aaron Rodgers this game. I don't think their run game is just going to dominate Detroit. And I think Detroit's going to play more of the, if they got to put one egg into the basket over the other, they're going to do, all right, though the year shows us the run game's a little bit more dangerous. But if they go too far into that, the 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 Dobbs-Watson combination was not a real thing in Week 9. It is now. And Watson's, of course, a real option. And he's in the trust tree with Rodgers. There was plays in that game where he's open. There's plays, you know, throughout the game. You know, that was a game where they had Amari Rodgers and Sammy Watkins as two of their receivers that were playing a lot with Alan Lazard. You know, and and even saying that, there was still a lot of people open and plays to be had. So I came away more than anything going, Rodgers should have thrown like five touchdowns for 500 yards, and if they're going to win this game. I do think it's going to be on him okay. and whether he can deliver some of these plays that are there to be had. So they have Watson now, yeah. and Dobbs has worked his way in maybe a little bit more now. Um, so that's better. That's a difference. Is Aaron different? Has he progressed? He has, but not as much as I would like to have seen him progress. He At least he's, there's some aggressive mindset, and he's not turning down all the deep throws anymore. So he just has, most. yeah, well, just still not as many as uh, you would like or what we've come accustomed to see. Yeah. You know, there's games over the last few weeks where I'm still go, I mean, three years ago, you could never do this to him. He would be like bombs away and just go, I'm, I'm 10 for 10 on, you know, 50 yard bombs here. Cause you guys keep playing the stupid defense. Right. Yeah. You know, so there, there's still that element, but, uh, I, I do think it's, definitely better than what it was at week nine which i said was a a real low point so i think it's likely that the packers offense plays a little bit better against a really bad detroit lions defense but well last one more thing wow colombo again colombo just this is where i think it's different too i'd be shocked your lions defense you know you've seen you're not that good at pass defense right 
I'd be shocked if they don't come away looking at that film going, you know what, forget the two tight end sets and the running and all that. Let's spread them out. Let's spread them out and put them in a little bit of bind. If they want to play zone, they're not that great at zone, and I'll pick them apart that way, and the RPOs and all those will all work. And then if they want to play man-to-man, then they gave us some opportunities in the first time, and I hit Alan Lazard and probably should have hit him more along with other guys that I'm telling you about. Right. That's that, that was what I wanted to say to end it up. Sorry, okay. sorry to uh, interrupt you for the first of ten times today. All right, so they'll, they'll probably score more than nine points. I would bet the over <laughs> on nine so. points for the, the Green Bay Packers, but I could also bet the over on 15 points for the Detroit Lions because we've seen that offense be very good. And in this game, they weren't really. Goff threw for 137 yards, had a pick. Uh, team ran for... 117. Um, so as you look at the other side of the ball, are there things that the Lions maybe can also do that would give the Packers more trouble than we saw the first time? Oddly enough, I feel like yes. And I know how good the Lions are at running the football and they like to do that. The Packers sold out in such a way to stop the run in the first game that I thought. Detroit almost did itself a disservice by like continuing to stay with it hmm. to where you'd go, no, no, no. You guys need to spread out too, especially on first and second down. You know, the, the, they tried to play, hey, we're going to run it on first because we're, we're good at running the ball and they were not playing great defense at that time of the year. We should be able to run and be in second and five or second and four every time. First and second down for the most part of the game was won by the Packers offense. They, they stopped a lot of those plays for no gains, loss of one. Um, so that would be the big thing, but like that, what I, one of the things I wrote in my notes is, you know, the, the plan for the Packers D was er, obvious early. It was cover the middle three offensive linemen, you know, just pack people in there and stop the run game. Um, you know, I felt like the lions could pick apart their zone coverages, but like, you know, first down for lions almost always was an eight man front. Packers were playing single safeties, you know, but the Packers D was winning, you know, on first and second down. Where the Lions are dangerous is when they get you in those second and five, second and six, second and four, second and four, as you know, not only can they throw, but they can run for a first, which then also ties in the play action. So you're like really screwed when you're a defense playing them because their availability and their play calling and they're creative and all that. So, uh, you know, that would be my big thing. The Packers did a good job of calculated – Eight-man fronts and run blitzing on first down to not let the Lions be in the power position of second and five, second and four, where they are extremely dangerous. Yeah, you gave a special shout-out to T.J. Slayton, the defensive tackle for them. To Daryl. Yeah, to Daryl Slayton. Darryl, sure. to, yeah, it's all right. What, Maybe. T.J.? He, doesn't he go by I T.J. too? I think he goes too? by T.J. You're right. You're right. I know him a little bit better than you, so <laughs> I can call him T.J. Uh, you said he was phenomenal in the run game, Kenny Clark, too. Yes. Uh, and, and even though they were able to pick apart the Packers' defense, the zone, in some of that short passing game, you did know in your notes that I they did. had as good a feel as any D against the Lions passing They game did. Year. Like, when they did some of the play action and down the field stuff, you know, I think they felt comfortable about putting people at the line of scrimmage because they felt like, we kind of know where they're going to end up in some of these. Hmm. And, you know, had, again, combination zone coverages without me getting too in the weeds in here, but I, just as we always classify it, just like, you know, they had a guy going to the post and a guy running the out route and a guy underneath, and they kind of had people waiting for all three of them, right, to tell me that their breakdown and their feel for the offense was very real. And they did a really good job of that. Um, so... Yeah, that, that's that's going to be the interesting thing, and that's where I could see them maybe coming out early on and going, hey, wait, wait, spread out. Yeah. We're not going to let you play these eight-man fronts. We don't know who's dropping in the coverage, who's blitzing and all that. Spread them out, make the picture more clear for me a little bit, right? Now I can see, oh, wait, the safety's creeping down. They might blitz, or right. this guy's cheating. And you also widen out those zone coverages. And Green Bay, who's been playing better defense and making plays lately, yes, for sure. You know, I still think... This is tough to match up with you guys and your receivers man-to-man, and they do have some good plays out of their shotgun spread where they can pick apart his own defense. Packers favorite in this game, gut feel, who has made the biggest improvement since week nine and who has the edge on Sunday night? <sighs> it's not your final pick yet. No, sorry. I know. I just I feel, I'm sorry. Pick. Sorry. No, yeah, try that I think again. The, oh, it's all right. I'll shut up. No, I don't know if I'm definitely going to. I just feel like the Packers do have the edge. I do have the gut feel of, yeah, it's at home. It's Aaron Rodgers. It's Green Bay. They got a lot of positive vibes going. Uh, it's certainly 
not a slam dunk type of thing, but I, I do think the Packers have the advantage, yes. What I will say, too, and there was some concern about putting this game in Sunday night in that window because Seattle, they're saying it might be unfair to Seattle because if Seattle wins, then Detroit knows they have nothing to play for and that they're eliminated from the playoffs. Maybe they won't give the Packers the game. I almost feel like the opposite could happen. It could take the pressure off. And exactly. Then just go, you have nothing it, to lose. Let's ruin the Packers. You're here. I wasn't going to call this play on third and seven. Yeah. But now, f- it, we're not going to be playing next week anyways. Let's go for it. Yeah. Agreed. And, you know, last thing you said with the, the zones, too, because I want to make sure I'm clear about that. Okay. You know, because they had a great feel for the zones and all of that. My thing was I think they'll be able to play off of this a little t- this time, too, as far as hear what I'm saying a little. The Packers like to play zone. They're very good at, hey, passing a guy off, right? Hey, this guy's going to the post. And, you know, but but I think they're going to find ways of what I'm trying to say is to kind of expose some of the things they did. I think they're going to they're gonna be able to find some ways to go, wait, in this zone, this guy did this to us, and they had one guy cover two of our guys. But if we just change the route of the one guy, right, they would have no way to cover this, and they're going to be exposed. Yeah. Where I can see the Lions exposing them a few times through things that were done the first time to go, wait, wait, we're not going to let you do that again. You can't cover two guys with one guy here. We're going to change the combination a little bit and screw you over. Sorry about that. I just had no, to get that. No matter what happens, it's been a fun season as a Lions fan. Yes, and exactly. That is my way of preparing myself for disappointment, which is we're very good at that as Detroit Lions <laughs> fans. You just prepare yourself for the worst, and if the best happens, you're surprised. Thanks for watching, homies. Hit subscribe to see all my unbuttoned videos. You get to see me, Ahmed Fareed, all the big player breakdowns, game breakdowns, player interviews, and my film analysis. So please subscribe. Chris Sims Unbuttoned. Peace out.